Hello everyone, I am Kasun Chang. I'm a curator and art critic in Hong Kong. Uh, welcome to Whitestone Gallery. Um, today, I'm, I'm, it's my pleasure to give you an exhibition tour, the current exhibition at the gallery called Whirlwind en Famille to Gutai. So in this exhibition, we'll have the pleasure to see some of the very significant artworks by four prominent Japanese artists, including uh, Toshimitsu Imai, Hisao Tomoto, Atsuko Tanaka, and Yuko Nasaka. So I think before we go on a deep dive of some of the highlighted works in the exhibition, I think it's good for us to know a little bit more details of what is exactly enfomel and good time. So art enfomel is art term from France that emerged around 1940s and 50s in the wake of World War II. So back then in Europe, there is an urgency to sort out a different kind of abstraction expression in the art world. And they wanted to sort for a certain art form that is more about highly gestural technique and also with a hint of spontaneity and freedom. So in the States, they go with abstraction expressionism, but for Europe, they go with something called enfamel. So some of the more famous uh, artists in the Western can that you think of is uh, Willem de Kooning, Georges Mathieu, or uh, Jean de Buffet, for example. So in this exhibition, we have two Japanese artists, Imai and Domoto, who were back then based in uh, France, later uh, went back to Japan and brought enfamel style to the country. So it's not only introducing a new form to Japanese art scene, but also marks the crystallization of Gutai art movement in Japan. So Gutai similarly, also arises from the wake of World War II. Uh, something different is that uh, Japan has been through also the war, but also a nuclear crisis, right? So in Japan, there's also another urgency to start for a kind of a, a different, more radical way of expression. So what is exactly gu tai? So gu is tool in English, and tai is body. So it's a perfect term that integrates the body and matter. So it really reflects how Gutai artists in Japan uh, perfectly combines their body in the creative process or artistic practice. So it's not just uh, seeing body as just a vehicle of the artist, but also it's become it's sort of a medium for the creative process. So a lot of good Thai artists, their practice are very avant-garde and very experimental. And in this show, we have the chance to see two female good Thai artists, which is pretty rare because back in the day in good Thai Art Association, only a few of the artists are women. For Nasaka and Tanaka, they are really prominent and it's a great chance to see some of the most significant works in this exhibition. So without further ado, maybe I can start introducing some of the highlighted works by Imai and Domato first on the first floor. So if you are slightly familiar with um, uh, Shiraga's work, you might see a certain relevance to it. So in uh, Enfomel, uh, some of the highlighted uh, signatures of this art movement is definitely the experimental spirit in terms of how to use the medium of paint, but also the highly gestural technique. So in this oil and canvas work uh, created in 1963 called Composition, so uh, Emai really plays perfectly with all the experimental spirit of uh, using the medium of paint and also creating very dynamic energy flow. So in this work, I think my first interpretation is that I see it almost like a blooming flower or almost like a butterfly fluttering its wings. What is very beautiful here is that he uses very bright and bold colors in terms of the red, but there is still a hint of green and blue sort of splashing across the canvas. And I think one of the things that really sparks my attention is the nuanced and slight thick impasto on the canvas, if you see it from the side. I think this is very significant in Enfamel's work because in order to create gestural uh, movements on the painting, it's important for artists to use a lot of paint 
to create this kind of depth and layer. So that's why if you see uh, Imai's other paintings in a show, you'll also notice he didn't restrain himself to use a lot of um, black palette or also very thick impasto to create that depth and dimensionality. And I also want to, you to pay attention to the kind of the flow of energy in a painting, because I, lo I guess a lot of times when the viewers see like works that are about expressionism, we always think artists must go all the way. But if you look closely, actually you can see how he's so manipulative and controlled in the use of brushes. Because you can see, although it's like almost like the red color is splashing across the canvas, there is still a very like calculated form and composition in the work. So I think these are what the beauties of how um, Enfamel artists, especially in Mai, that he combines that kind of experimental spirit of using paint as a medium, but at the same time still has the calligraphic mode of expression of the East. So talking about more calligraphy kind of approach, we can definitely see that in this small work by the artist called Soleil, which is the sun in French. So in this work, he used um, like a very kind of a sheer gold base, as well as using red color to depict the sun, of course. But rather than manipulating the red palette to illustrate the energy of the sun, he decided to use a very thick, dark black palette to do so. So again, something similar. You see the thick impesto definitely across the canvas, but in order to really depict that kind of solar energy, you see he also uh, you employ that kind of splashing technique. So the uh, black oil paint actually kind of almost look like um, raindrops kind of splashing across the work. And what I really like about this painting is although it depicts really well of the solar energy, the inclusion of the hint of green actually helps with balancing the energy of the whole painting. Because if we omit the green color, it, it's definitely a very strong, a powerful work, but adding the green from a more cooler palette actually helps with balancing something that we call you know, chi you know, in, in Eastern paintings. And I think this is a perfect illustration of how Imai is able to still incorporate abstract expressionism, but at the same time remain and retains a kind of a Japanese spirit of control and manner or restraint. And I think this is very significant for Japanese artists that brought uh, informal art to Japan, because it's for them, the most important thing is not to just uh, incorporate, it, so to say, Western style of art, but still uh, maintain their Japanese uh, heritage. And in this show, there are also a few more connoisseur works by Imai. We can definitely have a look later. So, moving into this separate space, we have a couple of paintings by Hisao Tomoto, another Japanese artist that brought Enfamel art movement to Japan. Very different use of palette and also different stylistic choices. I think one of the most apparent difference is that how Domoto focuses on using the swirling movement and technique in the painting while Imai focused more on the energy perspective, which is the splashes of the paint. And I really would like to take a chance if we can talk about this untitled work from 1956 by the artist. So I think my, when I first saw this work in person, I actually, it actually reminded me a little bit of Zhao Wuqi's Hurricane series. Because again, it's the swirling movement that really caught our attention. And again, similar to Imai, there is a, a, a lot of use of thick impasto to create the depth and the layer and the dimension. But I really appreciate how Domoto loves to use a more cooler palette. You see the green, the gray, and the bluish tone. I think this really gives out a more tranquil atmosphere. At the same time, highlights how Domoto would like to kind of illustrate or depict a certain abstract moment of nature. And I think in this painting, similar to the sun painting by Imai, if although it looks great with only the cooler palette, 
But what I really appreciate the most is the kind of blurry mixture with the orange and the yellow and the pink hue in the left section of the painting. I think this adds a little bit more flair to the work because, again, talking about uh, Enfamel-inspired art, it's very important for them to able to ex express a certain emotion for abstraction. So by, by including a little bit more colors that refer to a lot of more passionate emotions and feelings, I think this really helps with balancing this particular painting, for example. And it's also quite interesting to see how he uses various types of impasto and layers because he didn't really use like a lot of oil paint on the right side of the work but all the impasto and the thickness remains kind of towards the center or the left hand side of the painting it really creates a certain interesting balance so it's not too overwhelming to the audience and again this is a signature style of uh, enfamel artists in japan which is to really strive a balance between expressing as well as retaining a certain level of rationality, so to say. Besides this work, I think, of, again, a very different painting by the same artist will be this one in the center. The work also created around 1956 to 1957, this, I think, one of the quite interesting technique is that if you look from afar, you may not notice that uh, you may thought actually the negative space was just a blank canvas, but it's actually painted with more cream or ivory white palette. I think this is a very interesting take. The second thing is that Domoto actually allowed the paint to be more watery rather than a very thick impasto. But what he did here is that he allowed the paint to kind of uh, flow and drop across the canvas. This kind of composition reminds me more like melting glaciers and like the water, the ice, the ice capes, they're melting and then, you know, flowing down uh, to the bottom of the hill. But at the same time, he also uses uh, a certain black color that reminds you again, like a, like a technique from calligraphy. So this just, it's not just kind of like a simple abstract version of a lateral landscape. It really reminds me of like an incorporation of more Eastern traditional techniques from ink calligraphy, not only just the color, but also how he manipulates those brush strokes and the gestures. And this is, I think, compared to his other works in the show, is very different because other um, you know, of his works are, again, more about the swirling, almost like whirlwind-like composition. And this is a very different take so this really shows how versatile Domoto's practice is throughout his career. So after introduction of like two of the two artists that brought on female art to Japan, we can move on to the section with more Butai inspired art. So one thing you can definitely feel the difference is the level of energy. So on female art, for sure, it's about expressionism and abstraction. But for good Thai art, uh, as I mentioned, is really about using uh, a masterful use of technology as well as avant-garde industrial materials. So here we have Atsuko Tanaka's work. One of the things you first thing that you notice is definitely how glossy the painting looks like because she uses a synthetic resin animal paint to cover the whole surface of the work. So that's why, you know, no matter which perspective you look at the painting, you can definitely see that it's very shiny, very glossy and electrifying. The reason you think it's electrifying is because uh, several of her works in this exhibition are inspired by electrical diagram. So that's why there are a lot of uncounted numbers of uh, circle motifs. At the same time, they're all connected together through different um, lines. And you can see she has a very peculiar use of colors because it's actually different shades of red, yellow, and blue, which are, so to say, some of the more primary colors. And I really like how 
how good Thai artists approach these paintings because the re one of the reasons good Thai artists, they use a lot of very uh, unconventional materials is to really to talk about the industrialization or modernization of Japan back in the day when they're desperately trying to achieve economic growth after World War II. So a lot of these artists, they decide to use these very specific materials to depict uh, motifs that are related to technology, but at the same time, it really reflects a certain flair. So compared to other good Thai artists, for example, what I think, what I really appreciate from Tanaka is the first, at the first impression, her works always seem very joyful, very vibrant, energetic. Compared to other good Thai artists or even unfamiliar artists that you've seen, because um, the way they express through painting, it's actually quite, you can feel a certain heaviness because also in terms of how thick they, they use the paint, but at the same time, uh, the portrayal is very different. So I think this is something that you can see like contrast in between the two different art movements in Japan. And opposite to Tanaka's uh, work will be a several paintings by Yoko Nasaka, one of my favorite good Thai artists in Japan. So one of the things that you notice immediately is how she loves the circle motif. There is always about uh, infinity uh, in relation like time or space, but she always loves this kind of motif and really adds a lot to you know, in terms of how she uses various materials. And in, these, in this very particular series, she uses plaster, clay, uh, also lacquer actually, to really form the surface. But then she put this kind of board panel on top of a homemade mechanic table. And when the table start to turn, she used a palette knife to start curving patterns on the work. So it starts to create this circular motion. This may remind all of you how people make pottery. It's, it's the same technique of how you used to make like clay or, or ceramic, but she turned this uh, method into making a dimensional painting, so to say. And I think uh, these few works on this floor are really like miniatures of how she uses this technique but we actually have a few more works downstairs that are more prominent or so to say more historical that you can see how she masters all of these methods throughout her career. And I think uh, later we can go downstairs and have a look at those works. So let's, let's head downstairs maybe. So maybe we can head to the um, main gallery space on this seventh floor. So as I mentioned, they look completely different and these are all Nasaka's paintings so it's a very definitely a very different take they're the same good Thai artists from upstairs I personally really like the works that she used like the bluish tone over here the two larger works are in six board panels they're more historical while the three smaller ones on the side they're a more recent they're from 2014 15 16 so you can see, you know, she mastered this formation for a very long time, but you can still see nuance and differences from how she approached all of these individual works. And I think these more recent ones, a slightly more contemporary approach to it in terms of how she uses the more like vibrant colors or the form and the circular motion that's rich and lush. Uh, but uh, personally, I still believe that her more historical works really encapsulated the historical context back then, uh, you know, after uh, World War II and what happened to Japan. So in, in the six board panels works, same technique, same approach. She used a lot of um, lacquer, clay, plaster to really create this interesting and conventional form. So, but what I really like is the use of the bluish and turquoise color. I think this is really significant if you look at more historical master works in Japan or even South Korea. This kind of blue palette, it means a lot. It's like, because this kind of blue color is not only connected to more meditative 
a palette or connects with a little bit more religious or spiritual connotation in Japan or South Korea. But I think this use of bluish tone, for me, if you, it really gives a more zen and tranquil tranquility because it's meant to be depicting uh, uh, infinity and cycles. So if you look like very still to all of her paintings, it's almost like putting you into a trance. And with the blue color, it really adds to this kind of effect. So if you imagine this is in a red color, I don't think it has the same feeling. Uh, that's how I really like Misaka's work because it's not just about an avant-garde use of materials, but also how she incorporates a more spirituality and Japanese religion or spirituality in Japan into her works. And that's something that I really appreciate. And also you see how diverse she can go from the same form or same kind of series. So just to add a little bit more, if you go to this side of um, the exhibition, of course we have a similar work, uh, a six board panel, but I also would like uh, people to actually able to pay attention and appreciate um, so to say work on paper by Nasaka because this is this may be a some sort of like a study of her more like a plastered infused work but here you can really see how you know uh, for example when she put these board panels on the turning table what kind of effect or pattern that she can actually create from this very new method so you see like there are various types of circular motions that she's able to create with this kind of turning table, pottery table inspired uh, creative process. And you see like sometimes it may not be like a full circular motion. Sometimes something abruptly happened and something was slashed across the, the surface. And you can really appreciate that kind of perfection from imperfection. I think Wasabi Sabi is definitely a very important uh, Japanese aesthetic as well as philosophy. And I think from this kind of work, work on paper, you can uh, see more clearer than her signature plastered uh, board panel works. So I hope this exhibition tour is able to give you a more clearer picture of how Enfamel and Good Thai uh, art uh, is, is in Japan. And if you have any questions, you can always ask me or reach out to colleagues from Whitestone Gallery. So thank you so much for joining. Thank you.